and happy Easter. Welcome to St. Paul's United Church of Christ here in downtown Wausau, Wisconsin. We are so pleased and excited to have you joining us today. I invite you right away to turn to your bulletin and join with me in our call to worship. The dawn has broken. Alleluia. The tomb is empty. Alleluia. The stone has been rolled away. Alleluia. The women have witnessed. Alleluia. The grave clothes have been folded. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ has risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, I welcome you today to Easter Sunday. Please join with me then in our opening prayer. Giver of new life, we come before you this morning with our alleluias, our banners, and our flowers, bells, trumpets, and song. We come to worship in beauty and in truth because we have faith that Jesus Christ is raised from the dead. We come filled with hope because we know that the resurrection will enter into each of our lives and transform us. We come seeking beauty and truth. We pray that through Christ's Spirit, we learn to love one another. Amen. I invite you to join with me also in passing of the peace. Please turn to whoever may be with you in the room. Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. As God has sent me, so I send you. And when he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. May the peace of the Lord be with you and also with you. Amen. I invite you to hear our special music today for Easter Sunday. O oh, sons and daughters, sing your praise. Thank you. story. This day is taken from the Gospel of John, and I begin with John 1. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and she went to Simon Peter and the other disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They've taken the Lord of the tomb, and I do not know where they've laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down and looked in and saw linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place all by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that Jesus must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes, but Mary, Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look inside the tomb 
And she saw two angels in white standing where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said to them, Because they've taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they laid him. When she said this, she turned around, and she saw Jesus standing there. But she didn't know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Who are you looking for? Well, supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you've laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary. And he, she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and to your Father, to my God and to your God. And Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he said those things to her. And that ends our gospel lesson for this Easter Sunday. Thanks be then to God. Please join me with the hymn on page 234, Crown Him with Many Crowns. again. Jesus said that to the disciples numerous times before his death on that cross. Now, you would think, wouldn't you, that hearing that over and over again, they'd be prepared for that first Easter morning to welcome him back from the grave. But clearly they were not. Forgotten, at least momentarily, was his promise that on the third day he would rise again. St. Paul would later write in his letter to the Corinthians that Christ has conquered the final enemy. The final enemy being death. But it is clear such was not the expectation of his friends or the disciples on that first Easter morning. It is true. You can have a broken heart. Sometimes our hearts are just heavy with grief. It's not just an old saying. And that's exactly how it was on that morning. They had forgotten Jesus' promise that on the third day he would come back again. They all knew that Jesus was dead. And with him, dead too were their hopes. And dead were their dreams. 
and dead with their aspirations. They were overwhelmed with a sense of loss. Indeed, their hearts were heavy. But that is not where our story ends. If it were the case, you and I would not even be here today. This is where the story begins. According to Luke's account of the resurrection, a group of women make their way to the tomb. It's early on Sunday morning. Actually, it's probably even still dark. And they make their way. And they get there. And they find the stone rolled away. What they find inside is two men in dazzling white who, who say to them, why do you seek the living among the dead? Remember, remember how he told you that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and on that third day rise again. He's alive! He's alive! He's conquered death, just as he said. Jesus defeated the final enemy, death. But realistically, what does Easter really mean in our lives? We who claim to be followers of Jesus today. Doesn't it mean that we no longer need to fear death either? If Christ has come and then overcome the grave, doesn't that mean that death no longer has any hold on us as well? You know, we're kind of strange when it comes to talking about and thinking about our attitude toward death, aren't we? We really don't want to talk about it. We really don't want to hear about it. Uh, a novice new twist, by the way. This is a true story. There is a funeral home in Florida that can advertise that they can absolutely guarantee that you're going to go to heaven. They advertise a dramatic invocation in burial services for about $14,000, roughly. They guarantee you that you're going to go to heaven. Now, how do they do that? Well, what they advertise is that you will be cremated, you will be put into a capsule, and you will be shot from a rocket into orbit where they're predicting that you will circle the earth for about 2,300 years. Well, that's part of their pitch anyway. The problem is, heaven isn't necessarily up there, and happiness isn't necessarily up there either. But it is one of their selling points. So, wouldn't it be kind of interesting that on a clear night, you could look out and be watching the stars, and all of a sudden, you see a capsule circulating the earth, and you go, oh, look at that. There goes George, or there goes Mary, or there goes Bill, or whoever it might be. Now, I don't know about you, but I find it sort of ridiculous. Still, it is very difficult for most of us to face the thought of dying. In the cartoon Family Circle, the family is evidently returning from Grandpa's funeral. 
the mother says to the children in the back seat, well, yes, we will see grandpa again someday when we go to heaven. When the youngest child burst out from the back seat, um, can I just wait in the car? We are created for life, not for death. No one who is healthy in mind, soul, body, or spirit looks forward to dying. And of course, that's the point. God did not bring us into being for this world only. Death has been conquered. Because Jesus Christ lives, we shall live too. But Easter also says to us that we no longer need to fear life either. But it does seem, and it does appear, that sometimes there are things in life that might be even worse than death. So then, what does Easter have to say to us as we face this, this thing we call the journey of life? Life has its hills and valleys, and boy, you hear me say that a lot. It has heartache, it has disappointment, it has hurt, it has frustrations. But it also says that God is involved in this world. God is not in some far away, removed place playing golf. He's involved in the human condition. God is ultimately and intimately involved with all of God's creation. Dying does not interrupt our relationship with God. Through Jesus Christ, our life goes on forever into eternity. The saddest Christian in the world is the one who believes that faith is simply buying a one-way ticket to this faraway place called heaven. Such faith so often leads to joyless legalism. Christian faith is about love. Ultimate love. Easter is about new life. New joy. New hope. New possibilities. New opportunities. God is involved in this world and in your life, trying desperately to get your attention and to make a difference. That's what the celebration of Easter is all about. For over 2,000 years now, the church has proclaimed that Christ is the victor. I've been focusing a lot on history as of late, and I'm finding it to be really interesting and intriguing. In the Middle Ages, people would gather at the crack of dawn, just like in that first Easter story, to begin their Easter celebration. They would gather outside of the church. And there they would hear the gospel story read to them in the churchyard. And that would always follow with the joyous hymn, Christ the Lord has risen today. And then the bells would start to ring. And the priest, holding high a lighted candle, would invite everyone to light a candle too and come into the sanctuary where they would receive the light of the world. 
And then that light was passed on to everyone who was holding a candle. With these candles flickering in their hands, now they would come to the church doors, which at this point are still locked. And they'd pound on the church doors. They would lock, knock loudly with their voices raised in unison, lift up the gates, O ye rulers, lift up the gates, and Christ the Lord will enter in the King of glory. And then, from inside, a voice would come back and say, Who is the King of glory? And the answer broke forth excitedly, He is the Lord, strong and powerful. He is the Lord Almighty. The church doors would open, and the Easter celebration, the victory would begin. For you see, Christ is alive, and that victory is ours today. Bishop Desmond Tutu, speaking at the House Bushnell Congregational Church in Hartford, Connecticut, said, It is Christ that will win forever and ever and be the light to the world. Amen. Easter also tells us that more than anything else, more than anything else, you and I matter. That's why it's so important to believe in the Easter story. Certainly, it's not that we don't believe in God otherwise, I would hope. I mean, history keeps telling us and proving again and again and again the proof of God's existence. So that should not be the issue. But what is at stake here is whether your life and mine has any significance. Do we live for only, what, a season? And then, poof, we're gone forever? Or are we so important in God's eyes that even death itself cannot separate us from his love. Christianity is not simply a set of values, a moral code, a style of living, a grand philosophy. Christian faith is Easter faith. It is the conviction that people matter so much to God that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, on our behalf. That he allowed him to be crucified on a cross for our sins. But on that third day, on that third day, he rose again from the grave as a sign and as a symbol that your life and mine has eternal significance. Indeed, indeed, God is involved. Christ is victorious. But even more importantly, we really do matter to God. And lately, I believe that God has cried many tears over many of us. That's why we're gathered here today. That's why the empty tomb is the central part of our faith. In the book, Who is Jesus? The author writes, Throughout the centuries, men and women have tried to honor their hero by erecting lavish monuments. Massive pyramids in Egypt built as a resting place for the Egyptian pharaohs. The glistening Taj Mahal, the tomb of an Indian empire, emperor and his wife. Lenin's tomb in Red Square, the place where the body 
of the Marxist leader is preserved by some mysterious process. The burial vault at Mount Vernon, the site of President George Washington's body. In its stark simplicity, Jesus's grave can't compare. Why? Simply because it's empty. He is not there. He's not there. He's alive and well and victorious. And because he lives, you too can live victorious as well. So happy Easter. Go out there and make a joyous difference in a much needing world. Please join me with one of our favorite Easter hymns, Thine is the Glory. church this day. During the last month, we here at St. Paul's have been doing an offering for the UCC Ukraine Relief Fund. I was going to end this uh, presentation about a week ago, but after watching the news, now know that the needs are much, much more than ever before. I really cannot even believe that this is happening in our world today. So I'm going to continue to promote the UCC fund and as well as, of course, gifting to St. Paul's. However, if you choose to give to the UCC Ukraine Relief Fund, please write that on the memo line. If you happen to be sending us cash, please make sure that we know it's from you because you are credited for your church accounts for these gifts. So, on this Easter Sunday, be with me then for a, a moment of prayer. Almighty and loving God, we talk about often the things we take for granted. Clearly, our freedoms, our right to life, our lifestyle, which includes worshiping you, need to be protected and need to be guarded even yet today. So we pray this Easter Sunday for our brothers and sisters around the world, but particularly today in Ukraine. We pray that somehow this, this horrible war comes to an end and we pray for your protection and your love. And we also ask that you touch us deep in our hearts so we can help to make a difference for all those people who have been left to fend for themselves and find new places to live. May our gifting make a difference this day. Amen. I invite you to hear our offering music. It's called He Lives. <laughs>
invite you to please share with me in our prayer of dedication. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. Everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Everything we have comes from you. Today we give back to you. Use our offerings of money, time, and talents to enliven your church and to hearten the world, a world prone to discouragement. May our gifts this day enable a spreading of the love of Christ, and may all our gifts and our giving be acceptable in your sight. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Please join with me in the doxology. day this is, O oh God, and we are grateful for the opportunity to celebrate Christ's new life together here in this holy place. We thank you for our congregation and for the Church Universal that gathers today to sing your praises and be renewed in faith. Yet even as our hearts thrill at the words of victory and resurrection, we remember that not all of your children are blessed with knowledge of your loving power. Our hearts ache with those who live in sorrow, pain, and need. For those who this day of resurrection is not a day of joy, but rather a day of anguish. Shine your healing light upon them. Fill them with serenity and show us how we can be agents of peace in this world today. We pray also for ourselves. It is easy to praise you and to offer you our lives when we are here together, keenly aware of your presence and the hope that you offer. But we need strength and courage to continue to be faithful when we face the trials and temptations of our daily lives. Infuse us with your Holy Spirit so that we may be faithful disciples of Jesus Christ, our friend, our Lord, and our Savior, in whose name we lift up our silent but most intimate thoughts and prayers. And we honor you now with the prayer you taught so long ago. So please join with me. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please join with me too in the commissioning. Christ has risen. Christ has risen indeed. Christ has risen indeed. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. We go today living as the body of Christ. Go resurrected by love and empowered by the Holy Spirit. We go to continue God's work in this world. 
And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine about you. May the Lord give you peace and grace. Happy Easter. Amen. Thank you so much for enjoying this day and for joining us here at St. Paul's United Church of Christ. We do wish you a happy Easter. Amen.